sommes aux Utopiales, nous sommes le vendredi 31 octobre et nous sommes avec Robert Riddick. Robert, bonjour. Bonjour. Alors, dites-nous un petit peu ce qui vous a poussé à écrire et puis les, les livres peut-être qui, euh, qui vous ont donné envie d'écrire. So, uh, it's a great question, but a difficult one, because many books made me want to write. But as for uh, what made me want to write, I think it was uh, indoctrination from birth. Because um, my parents, you know, they just surrounded me with books, buried me with books, and they held up books before I could walk and pointed at words, cat, 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 you know, so one of those children. <laughs> Until it became a natural love for me. You know, and, And then I think to, to love to read is to begin to fall in love with stories. So at some point you want to share and give back, and it just began so naturally. But I fell in love first with fantasy and science fiction as a reader. And uh, my father read me these old classic um, uh, youth science fiction hardbacks that were published over in the, in the 50s and 60s in the United States. They had wonderful titles like Marooned on Mars and Five Against Venus and Battle with the Ant-Men. <laughs> so naturally I loved these great adventures from an early age. Alors, je vais parler un petit peu avant euh, le, le, le roman qui nous intéresse. Il y a eu un premier roman euh, qui s'appelait Conquistador. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en dire un petit peu plus Je crois que c'était plus un roman historique. That's right, yeah, it was a, well, recent history, it was set in the uh, late 1970s in Argentina during the so-called Dirty War. Yes. <laughs> so um, it was a project of eight years, uh, very, very close to my heart, um, but uh, also a project of an education for me about the difficulties of getting published, mm -hmm. because I think, um, you know, I was told by people in um, publishing in the United States that maybe there wasn't so much interest or comprehension about Argentina among the public, the reading public in the United States, so we'll see, maybe, maybe it will be published, I don't know. En, en quelle année vous l'avez écrit? Uh, from 1994 to 2002. Et la conspiration mm -hmm. <laughs> euh, vient de sortir il y a, il y a quelques mois, si j'ai bien tout compris, aux États-Unis et désormais en France. Pourquoi ce laps de temps entre les deux livres Well, uh, it came out um, 18 months earlier in the United Kingdom, but I had my first contract in the United Kingdom, so part of the delay was simply the legal arrangement, um, as they saw mm. a, a good publisher in the United States. Mais aussi, I'm a slow writer, honestly. <laughs> my, my natural <laughs> writing speed is I just, I really love to take my time and. Um, You know, when you're not published, no one cares how long it takes. It can take forever if you want. Um, but once you get published, it, everything changes. So I found, you know, it took me eight years to write Conquistadors. It took me four years to write La Conspiration du Lou Rouge, um, to write the sequel, The Rats in the Ruling Sea, 2.5 years. Quelle est l'idée un petit peu de départ de La Conspiration du Lou Rouge? The story overall? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a story about, it's set in a, invented world, a world of magic and, and war and politics, and there are, it's a bipolar world, with two immense empires that have been at war for centuries, they've been shedding each other's blood for centuries, and there's uh, an independent uh, string of small kingdoms between them that has always been the battleground. But after these centuries of war, there's finally a moment where peace is about to occur, And uh, the story opens aboard an immense sailing ship, 600 years old, that's on its way to the peace treaty. But the trouble begins when a few people in the crew learn that perhaps their empire has no interest in peace at all, but is seeking to throw their old enemies into a civil war which will destroy them and allow them to become the global supreme power. So that's the situation, and from there, so much else happens with uh, ancient sorcery and transdimensional wizards and animals who are uh, get a disease that creates human intelligence and all sorts of complications. Comment vous avez travaillé pour pour ce roman qui est très riche et très foisonnant? Est-ce que les idées sont venues au fur et à mesure, ou alors est-ce que c'est vous qui avez travaillé? Tout est venu un peu d'un bloc. Well, both things happened. It was just a process of I think the most important word I could say is intensity, or the most important phrase would be intensity of concentration. Mm -hmm. um, 
before and during and after it. I had many, many, many ideas, many details, but also many changes as I as I wrote. Alors, est-ce qu'on peut avoir quelques pistes sur le deuxième tome Qu'est-ce qui va un petit peu se passer Well, um, to give you some perspective, the first book takes place largely in the known world. The second book sees this ship and our heroes literally sail off the map into onto the side of the planet that has been cut off from uh, the history of the known world for centuries. Mm. So they, so the, the politics of the first book is raised an entire level, order of magnitude and complexity. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can add, um, this ancient ship, the reason it's so important is uh, it's the last of a fleet that was built uh, specifically for crossing this immense ocean, and it's the only one left that has the size that could make it possible to cross this ocean. So much of the novel um, relates the terrors and the difficulties of crossing, of this immense crossing. Et pour après, vous allez continuer en fantasy, en science-fiction, vous allez retourner faire des romans historiques, vous, vous avez déjà des idées sur ce que vous avez envie de faire I have ideas for um, more books in the same world, but I also have an idea for a book that would be about Edgar Allan Poe and Thomas Jefferson <laughs> and in my hometown of Charlottesville, Virginia. Great. Merci beaucoup, en tout cas. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. I really enjoyed it.